the 26th century, mankind faces an epic struggle for survival. The forces of nature have spun wildly out of control. Mighty cities have crumbled, and the dinosaurs have returned to reclaim the Earth. Savage land, one man stands alone, Jack Tenrack, defending humanity in a world gone mad, a world where only the strong survive, a world of Cadillacs and dinosaurs. So, anyone else wondering why this show only lasted 13 episodes? I'm just gonna say this outright. I decided to give the show a watch just because of its absolutely bizarre title and its absolutely bizarre concept. And the intro didn't exactly entice me into the show, at least for the right reasons. I mean, this intro, it, it just screams 80s, even though the show is made in the 90s. Like, you'd expect this to be the most ridiculous, over-the-top thing imaginable. But no, they actually take this very, very seriously. And you know what? This show is much better for it. Because this show is way better than it has any right to be. I mean, how good can you expect a series called Cadillacs and Dinosaurs to be? I don't know if it would make my top 10 cartoons of the 90s, but I find this show to be one of the most underrated of all time. It's based on the Xenozoic Tales comic book series by Mark Schultz, and that deals with heavy environmental themes and political issues. So he teamed up with the screenwriter for Die Hard and created one of the most interesting things that I've ever seen. If you don't believe me, let's just take a look at the first episode, Rogue. Taking a ridiculous concept seriously can backfire easily if you don't know what you're doing. But on the other hand, it can create something truly unique and give plenty of insight that you wouldn't have had otherwise. The episode starts with some trucks carrying people trying to get to a place called the City in the Sea for diplomatic reasons, apparently, when some marauders attack them. While most people would expect something like Jurassic Park from this kind of series, what this series reminds me of the most is Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Think about it, a world defined by a dangerous aspect of nature fighting back against humanity and pushing humanity into hiding. Most people want it completely destroyed, but our hero tries to find harmony between society and nature. In this show, there are differences though. For instance, most people don't seem to appreciate Jack trying to find a compromise between humanity and nature. When a village is burning down, they flat out blame him for his determination to protect the dinosaurs. What's the matter with you people? I'm here to help. We've had enough of your help, Tenrek. You know what did this to us? It was a giant shivet! A ship? That's impossible. They never come out of the foothills. No? See for yourself. Jack knows of the Marauders from earlier and figures that they're behind this. We cut to them making a deal for weapons. This person here wants Jack Tenrak to be destroyed completely. Why? Because she's a political leader that wants everyone to rely on her for protection. And that requires making nature look like it could threaten to wipe them out. Huh, so you can give anti-environmentalist villains logical reasons for destroying the environment. Captain Planet, eat your heart out. The woman comes across a huge city called the City in the Sea. It's New York in the future. And she comes face to face with a raptor. The raptor runs away before she sees a T-Rex. And I'm probably getting my dinosaur terminology wrong like I did with the pterosaur, but before you comment, just know that I don't give a shit. I'm not a paleontologist. A shiver didn't even see me. Oh yeah, like in Land Before Time, the characters have their own names for the dinosaurs. It, it works. I'm just calling them the names that I've learned, which once again is probably wrong because our knowledge of paleontology changes every couple of years. I was taught that dinosaurs have scales, but no, they have feathers. God damn it, science, you're ruining everything! The woman hears someone and fires her crossbow thing. It turns out that it's Jack's Cadillac, and that causes it to spiral out of control. While he's knocked out, he talks to a blue lizard Yoda telling him to trust the machinery of life and to believe in the Force. Basically, he's Jack's spirit guide that tells him that violence is not the answer. The woman wakes Jack out of his trance and accuses him of being a poacher. Since that's kind of the opposite of what Jack is, he takes offense to that. Lady, you couldn't be more wrong. My people have always been the arch enemies of the poachers. Your people? You mean in the city in the sea? No, my people, the old blood mechanics. You're lying. In Wasoon, all the old bloods have died off. Well, maybe in Wasoon, but there's a few of us left up here, and we still follow the Machinato Vitae. The machinery of life. I've heard of that. But right now, I'm more interested in machinery, period. So you just make that, 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 that thing of yours work again, okay? You are taking me to the city in the sea. 
That thing is a Cadillac, and it's not going anywhere without a new tire. You know, I have no idea if General Motors had anything to do with the series. Yeah, I think they have paid for this because it speaks highly about Cadillac cars. But honestly, I really can't tell. While Jack is fixing the tire, we learn that the animation in the series is pretty good. Even for the time, it's highly reminiscent of the comic books that it's based on. We also learn that the woman's name is Hannah. Mechanic. Hannah Dundee. Diplomat. Diplomat? Isn't that like a politician? Oh, a little bit. I hate politicians. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about this guy that I like. In the car, Hannah experiments with the radio. Unfortunately, they only get one station, and it's not a very good one. Fellow citizens, I implore you to learn from our own uh. history. The days when the mechanics were important to our survival were almost a century ago. We don't need advice from that obsolete breed today. Who's that? Wilhelmina Scharnhorst. She's one of the three governors in the city in the sea. If she had her way, she'd be the only governor, and I'd be run out of town. Jack Henrik and his mechanic friends are relics. They are the real dinosaurs. By telling us we can't build where we want to and plant where we want to, they are slowing progress. They are stopping development. They are taking food out of the mouths of your children. Honestly, I think I know why this series didn't take off, despite being very well written and very well animated. Well, for one, the network wanted it to be more like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which it didn't want to be, and two, it's kinda too complicated for a mainstream audience. I mean, the Nausicaa comparison is very apt. This spends as much time in its world and politics as much as a typical anime meant for young adults or adolescents does. And I'm talking about not appropriate for a mainstream audience back then. This was before Batman the Animated Series. We have things like Ren and Stimpy, Rugrats, Doug, DuckTales. Those were the things that were occupying the mainstream. This series is another story of being in the wrong time by being ahead of its time. Nowadays, I can definitely see something like this working. In fact, this kind of show seems to be exactly what our adult cartoons currently need. They come to Jack's garage, where he plans on figuring out what's going on with the rampaging T-Rex from earlier. Also, Jack has his own T-Rex, and believe it or not, they don't really use it as a mascot. It's just, it's just there as a pet. They see smoke, and Jack finds that a T-Rex is terrorizing the town. He springs to action, and because this was written by action film people, he goes alone. In the political office, the other two governors that aren't evil seem to strut that Jack's claims of peace were all wrong. Now? Now we build where we want. Clear forests, drain rivers, cut down any living thing that stands in our way. Jack Tenrick's philosophy is finished, and so is he. What a glorious, glorious day. So why does this kind of villain work in Cadillacs and Dinosaurs and not in Captain Planet? Because here, the people have a legitimate reason to hate nature. In the real world, the one that Captain Planet tries to convey, we fuck nature because we're apathetic towards it, not malicious like the people that it tries to convey. In this world, a world of Cadillacs and dinosaurs, it's completely understandable that some people would be malicious towards nature. Once again, Jack is told by the Blue Yoda not to kill. Unfortunately, Jack feels that he has to because if he doesn't, then the tribe will be destroyed. As we all can see though, the T-Rex has some kind of transmitter device, and through the skull of his gun, Jack sees it too. Jack immediately gives up trying to shoot it and jumps onto his back, risking his life. He pulls off the transmitter, and when he destroys it, the T-Rex becomes docile. Yeah, in this series, for the most part, the dinosaurs are portrayed like actual animals, like in the real world. They figure that someone has been transmitting a high-pitched sound from nearby, and they go to find it. Those doing it try to get away, but they do not get far. Jack and his friends manage to find the mercenaries and fight them. Unfortunately, Hammer, one of the main villains of the series and the leader of the mercenaries, manages to get away with some quick thinking and a hand grenade. This gets Jack into a very vulnerable position. To get out of this, Jack... You're forgetting one thing, Hammer. That shivet you tormented. It has your scent. It's gonna seek you out. Find you. Your old blood fairy tales don't scare me, Tenric. No? I'm talking ten tons of fairy tale, Hammer. I'm talking fangs a foot long and claws like steel hooks. When that shivet finds you, what's left of you won't even be a smear on the forest floor. I wonder if you'll be one bite. Or maybe two. Guess we'll know in a minute. <laughs> It turns out that it's just Jack's friend making some noises, but it does manage to scare off Hammer. Jack, knowing who's behind this, confronts the governor. That's what made that shiver destroy those settlements. You should treat it more gently. 
I also know that the only place the Terhoons could get one would be from you or your moles. The city council knows it too. They'll remove you from the Board of Governors when I show them that evidence. Evidence? What evidence? She is clearly a 90s villain. Sorry that this review took so long to make, been having technical issues lately, which I'm hoping to get resolved by the end of the month, but that will probably slow down my production. Hello, it's true, you're down, won't boot, and I made something that runs to show you that you're screwed. Hello, hey hello. to gray.